Our next presenter is uh, Dr. Robert uh, Sroka uh, from Kosminski University. Uh, and uh, we will have a presentation that will take us through the corporate social responsi uh, responsibility showing the current trends. <laughs> Good afternoon, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I try to combine practice and theory. Uh, uh, currently, I am ESG Environmental, Social, and Corporate Governance Director in one of private equity companies in Poland, but I'm also, uh, for 12 years, I've been doing researches on business ethics, corporate social responsibility, and non financial disclosure. And uh, the purpose of my presentation is to show corporate social responsibility idea in the broader uh, concept of the of the in the broader economic and business uh, aspect. Okay, are we ready? Okay, I think the such point of view is really is really important because. Uh, uh, knowing the current economic and business uh, concept influence or allow to understand properly corporate social responsibility uh, how we see uh, today and uh, the Francis Bacon said that true wisdom is to know the, the reason so let's try to find some uh, some reasons let's start from uh, from the definition according to uh, European Commission uh, Corporate social responsibilities are concept by companies into their social and environmental concerns in their business operation and in their interaction with their stakeholders on a voluntary basis. This definition, this is the old definition from 2011, and uh, I uh, underlined voluntary basis work because uh, those words influence uh, on understanding of corporate social responsibility. So companies used to say that. Uh, we can take care about the uh, environmental, social, human rights, uh, ethics, and if we uh, if we want to do it, we don't. We do it. But if we don't want to do it, we don't do it because it's uh, voluntary. And uh, this statement uh, really, uh, really, it's really important. And what's the consequence of, of such approach of corporate social responsibility? Let me give you some uh, some examples. The, this uh, slide shows the uh, performance of the uh, price value, Volkswagen price uh, value stock exchange after information uh, about fraud related to CO2 emission. And the question is, what was the true root of this uh, financial uh, crisis of, of, of Volkswagen? Uh, customers uh, stopped buying cars? Not. There were some crises in the automotive industry? Not. The true reason was lack of the ethics. Another example, uh, British Petroleum, this is the uh, financial uh, effect of the uh, uh, of the environmental uh, crisis uh, in uh, Mexican Gulf, and you, you know it was a huge spring of uh, oil in the Mexican uh, Gulf uh, in 2014, uh, I, I believe. And what was the true reason of this financial uh, results on on this company? And it was also almost a bankruptcy of this company. The true reason was the lack of corporate governance and lack of the appropriate uh, safety standard. So you see the non-financial area of the companies influence on the, on the financial uh, condition of the, of the companies. And uh, I can multiply a lot of uh, a lot of examples, uh, similar examples, and I would like to highlight that the reasons of the financial uh, crisis, financial problems, are in the, in the non-financial areas, lack of ethics, effective corporate governance, and effective risk uh, management. Uh, I would like to uh, indicate other important factor why we should uh, take seriously corporate social responsibility idea. Uh, as you see on the slide of the world's 150 largest economic entities, 87, it's almost 60% are companies, private companies. World's richest 26 own same wealth as poorest half. Just 1% of 
Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos' uh, wealth in 2018 was the equivalent of the entire health budget of Ethiopia, a country of 105 million people. So you see how huge power have private uh, companies. And uh, also we can, we see, we are witnesses, we are witnesses of the uh, changing business models. Uh, Nike Corporation, I, I believe that you know this, this company, Nike. How do you think, how many of factories are owned by Nike? Zero. How many factories uh, are owned by Apple? Zero. So, what decide about the, the value of Nike or, or Apple? Non-tangible assets. It means brand, marketing, supply chain, R&D, and so on and so on. And how many cars belong to the, the biggest taxi corporation in the world, Uber? Zero. No car. So you see that the business model has changed and the risks are located in the different, uh, different places. According to, uh, to, to Meton, uh, about the value of Standard & Poor's 500, is the, one of the biggest international, uh, international index, uh, in 1975, about the value of this index, I decide tangible assets, factories, stock, warehouse, logistics, and so on. But now, if you look at this, this chart, in 84% about the value of 500 standard impulse index decide intangible assets. So we have to completely change our understanding of corporate social responsibility and corporate, uh, corporate governance. So uh, to summarize this, uh, this part, no financial da data are financial in the long term. It's, it's a really important uh, statement. But according to the old definition, it's a voluntary. It, it shouldn't be voluntary. And the role in Newell account, chair of the OECD working group on responsible business conduct said that CSR is dead. It's over, what next? And we should give the answer, what next? The European Commission tried to give the answer to propose new definition of corporate social responsibility. They defined CSR like, uh, as a responsible of the enterprise for the uh, impact on society. What does it mean? It means that to fully meet the corporate uh, social responsibility, the prices should have in place a process to integrate social, environmental, ethical, human rights, and consumer concerns into the business operation and core strategy in close collaboration with stakeholders with aim of maximize, maximizing the creation of shared value and identifying, preventing and mitigate uh, the possibilities of ad, uh, adverse impact. So it is important to adopt long-term strategic approach to, approach to CSR, to the, explore the opportunities for developing innovative products, services and business model to contribute to uh, social well-being and to lead to higher equity and uh, more productive job. Uh, so, CSR is about how companies make money, not how spend, because uh, it's a well common understanding of corporate social responsibility like a philanthropic involvement. Not at all. It's a part of the business strategy. It should be uh, included into business into the business strategy. And today, the business approach to CSR is important due to at least four factors. Regulatory changes, investor trends, geopolitical trends, and business trends. And let, let me give you a, a few sentences about each of this, uh, uh, of this factor. Okay, okay. because we, we saw that it, about the value of today companies decide intangible assets. That's why also the reporting standard has changed. In 1916, uh, uh, there were only financial uh, data reported by disclosure by companies. In 1980s and 90s, uh, 
Besides fi financial disclosure, there were also uh, some information about corporate, uh, corporate governance and uh, environmental, environmental issues. Today, of course, financial uh, data on the, are on the first, first place, but uh, as of 2017, uh, in Poland, also in the European Union, large uh, listed companies and uh, financial institutions uh, are required to develop uh, to disclose non-financial data, such as uh, data about environment, human rights, health and safety, uh, anti-bribery activities, and so on and so on. So we see that law has changed, and it's not directly connected with the corporate social responsibility, but ask large company how they implement corporate social responsibility into their uh, business strategies. Uh, another, the, the, the previous, uh, the previous uh, uh, panelist said that uh, financial institutions and pressure from these uh, shareholders is really important if we uh, want to make pressure on the, uh, on the banks and other, com other companies. And I, I have to say that according to the EY uh, research, 80% of European investors take into account non-financial non data in, in the, into their financial, uh, financial practices. And uh, according to uh, principles for responsibility investment, the biggest uh, international non-government non organization focus on uh, responsible uh, finance said that more than 2,500 large international financial investors uh, taking into account non-financial data in their financial investment practices. So there is a huge pressure. Now we see a huge pressure. I see in my private equity company huge pressure from the international uh, financial institutions. And we have to take into account non-financial data. We have to take care about environmental, social, human rights, and so on and so on, if we want to be the part of the financial, uh, uh, financial um, industry. And what kind of uh, data are required from international investors? Uh, data such as, in terms of environmental, energy, fuel, water, chemical, hazard waste, and uh, forest pro uh, products, from, from the social perspective, health and safety, working conditions, supply chain, and in terms of uh, governance, leadership, international controls, accounting standards, and compliance. Why? Because it's safe, uh, saving cost, mitigate risk, and uh, enhance value. And this proof based on a lot of, uh, of uh, empirical uh, studies. Oh, and today, also companies are invited to fulfill some uh, social goals and environmental goals. In 2015, uh, United Nations uh, published Sustainable Development Goals and invited companies to participate in fulfilling these goals because without the private sector, it is impossible uh, to, to achieve uh, such goals. So you see the international trends which invite companies to be part of it. And uh, I think this information is really important for small, medium, and also uh, big uh, Polish companies. If Polish companies want to be a part of supply chain of international companies, such as uh, uh, Nestle, Starbucks, and so on, they have to be complied with international CSR standards. And here you see uh, some of the, uh, the well-known international standards like uh, 10 principles of global compact, ECOVADIS, Social Accountability International, uh, SEDEX, ISO 26000. There are certain regulatory standards. And what is important, more or less 1,500 companies in Poland are audited against the compliance of the standard and they, they are checked each year whether they comply, whether the corporate social responsibility are complied with, with uh, such really concrete requirements included to those standards. And based on, on this information, they could be the part of the supply chain of international standards. 
to finalize my uh, my presentation, I, if you would like to uh, to get no more get more information about uh, those topics, I would like to invite you to um, uh, to use uh, more reports and uh, and uh, and um, uh, more reports about those those topics. Uh, some examples uh, are on on my slide. Thank you. If you have any question, I will be happy to take it. Thank you very much for highlighting the current trends of um, corporate social responsibility. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, are there any questions? It's a really broad topic. Yes, please. Well, thank you very much. And uh, actually, and uh, when you talk about the financial data and the responsibility, and uh, I want to talk about the two cases. And the first case is that it's about the insurance. And actually, and I found more and more insurance companies, and they will change the, some rules, and uh, it will confuse people. Because, for example, and uh, I have this kind of case, and uh, when you have enough materials, but they will have some uh, thing, and they will confuse you, and they said it's not okay, and they will, and they will reject it. Actually, and uh, and also this thing it happened in China. And because in China and uh, some companies, especially insurance companies, and uh, for example, and uh, they will let more and more people to buy insurance. But when there are something happens, but and uh, they need to pay some compensations, and they don't want to pay it, and uh, also and they will mm, take it to a court or something else. But usually, some people and uh, they don't have enough money to pay the lawyer. So that's why and they will give us their rights. And uh, another case I want to mention is the it's also in, in it's also the internet uh, internet uh, internet financial companies. Actually, I'm more interested in the internet uh, internet financial companies. And at the beginning, it's a very very good thing. And at first, and uh, but some companies and uh, they are not reliable and they collect some money. And uh, later, and uh, they said they go abroad, and uh, they uh, and uh, they have a very very big expenses in the society, and a lot of people and they don't believe the uh, internet financial companies. So there are actually there are some very good and reliable and internet financial companies. And later, when the people don't believe don't believe them, and they don't believe the whole industry. And uh, some very good um, internet financial companies, and they have to go bankrupt because of there are some um, unre unreliable, unreliable internet financial companies, and they did something, and uh, they have uh, influences in this whole industry. So, and uh, they have the the whole society has the impression of this industry that and uh, it's very risky so that's why and uh, some good some good internet financial companies they have to go bankrupt so and i have these two cases and i want to ask uh, about your opinion okay regarding the, the first topic insurance companies uh, as i said the, the risks are located in the different place uh, today than it was before. That's why the insurance companies uh, perform due diligence on the companies in terms of non-financial area to mitigate risk. So it's happening. And regarding the second uh, second to topic, non-financial uh, data are not the, uh, the, the case of, uh, of benefits. The, the case of, uh, of this is the business case. So if we manage appropriate in non-financial area, we can mitigate financial risk. So it's uh, it's proven, and uh, a lot of uh, of cases I, I, uh, I presented only two show that uh, we have to take care about non-financial area to create the additional value of uh, companies. Any more questions? I would like to uh, 
bring back the issue of non-financial uh, reporting. I'm a huge fan of non-financial reporting. Uh, and um, as the new law, European Union uh, law requires those big uh, companies to disclose the information, uh, the non-financial information, but the most important thing in my, uh, uh, from my perspective uh, is that they, those companies are required to show their policy and risks concerning uh, those social, human rights, environmental <coughs> and uh, anti-corruption issues. And uh, as you could review those uh, uh, annual reports that uh, uh, included this uh, information last year, you can actually see that some companies had real problem with showing that actually they're doing something within uh, the human rights issue, corporate uh, uh, social responsibility, or uh, env uh, environmental um, awareness and environmental impact. So uh, I believe that the, the, the biggest advantage uh, of uh, those uh, new regulations was to make them those companies uh, think what they should really have within their uh, policy, internal policy, uh, and so that they would not be ashamed that they had to write that, mm, excuse me, we don't have any policy for human rights, for uh, health and safety, etc., etc. Uh, what, in your opinion, is the biggest advantage of, of those non financial reports? Thank you for, the, for this question. Yeah, it's this. this uh, the directive on non-financial uh, disclose uh, was uh, set up in 2014. So companies had time to prepare for the uh, uh, for the new regulation. And uh, the first year uh, where it was mandatory was uh, financial year 2017. And to be honest, the uh, reporting on non-financial data including uh, policies, risk, and uh, uh, and indicators uh, is on the really uh, weak level. The, the quality is really, really weak. That's why investors ask additional questions and do their own due diligence to check whether companies manage this idea properly. So yes, uh, the directive uh, uh, required to report, but unfortunately the Polish uh, authority and Ministry of Finance, they are aware that the, uh, the I, I believe 60% of uh, the uh, listed companies are not complying with this new regulation and do nothing with, with that. So this is, the, uh, this is the case without any fines, without any pressure from the authority. I unfortunately uh, I think that uh, the level of uh, disclosure of financial uh, data will on the weak level in the, during the next years. I hope it will be better because uh, it's not that the uh, Ministry of Finance did nothing. Uh, about a month ago, there was a conference on which uh, the Ministry showed the effect of, of a project of screening those uh, reports that were published last year. And the outcome was good practice. Uh, showing which companies do it in a very good way uh, and showing some really bad examples uh, how you should not report on those issues. I do hope that this policy of showing good practice uh, will eventually help uh, next companies to, to report better. I hope. <laughs> okay, thank you. Are there any questions? If not, thank you very much. Uh, perhaps one, one anecdotal thing. reports. One of the companies uh, in the section anti-corruption uh, uh, policy and risks and KPIs uh, uh, showed only one sentence. In our company, there is no risk of corruption. Dot. How? They didn't answer that question. 